Welcome to the weird and wonderful world of toy photography. Today kicks off an exciting journey as we embark on a mini-series delving into the essence of toy photography. We're diving deep into the rabbit hole, folks, and trust me, we're hitting rock bottom. In the best way possible. Hi everybody, I'm Kirsten Nuts and you're watching Platypod TV, brought to you by Platypod, where innovation never sleeps. So, what can you expect from this series? Well, we're covering everything from lighting techniques and capturing miniature marvels, to the magic of special effects, editing tricks, and even the mind-blowing world of stop-motion animation. We'll talk about creating depth of field, camera settings, and I'll show you how to craft jaw-dropping images with just a few simple steps using our favorite little yellow pals from a galaxy not so far away. Well, Denmark to be exact. So buckle up, because this journey is going to be nothing short of epic. All right, in today's episode, we're diving into the essential aspects of light that can transform your toy photography game from good to phenomenal. We're talking about the four fundamental characteristics of light. Quality, quantity, color, and direction. Let's kick things off with quality. Now when it comes to light, we're dealing with either hard or soft qualities. And you can spot the difference in how shadows appear and transition into highlights. With hard light, you'll notice a sharp divide between shadows and highlights, while soft light creates a more gradual transition. So what's the secret? It all boils down to the size of the light source relative to your miniature subjects. Have a look at this. For portrait with beautifully soft shadows, you typically use a large softbox like this one. But since our LEGO pals are tiny, we can achieve the same effect with a much smaller light source. Take my LEGO Stormtrooper here, for example. I'm using a small LED flashlight, and as you can see, the light is quite hard due to the small size of the source. Now, remember, the relative size of the light source is not just about its actual size, but also its distance from the subject. Think of the sun, it's huge. But because it's so far away, it appears relatively small, casting harsh light. To soften light, we spread it over a larger surface using diffusion. So check this one out. As I move my light away from the diffusion material, the light source gets bigger and the shadows become beautifully graduated. And here's another trick. Use a white bounce card to reflect light onto the subject, which instantly creates a larger light source and softer illumination. Pretty easy, right? I love using the original Loom Cube with its diffuser to create a light source that is the perfect size for miniatures. But we'll dive deeper into choosing the right light sources and modifiers later in the series, so stay tuned for that. Now let's delve into the second characteristic, color. Take for instance this LED panel light, a go-to for many toy photographers. Personally, I swear by my Loom Cube Panel Pro. Compared to my LEGO Stormtrooper, it's quite the behemoth. And as you've probably guessed, it bathes our little buddy in beautifully soft light. But here's where it gets even more interesting. I can easily tweak the color temperature from cool to warm with just a flick of a setting. Color temperature measured in Kelvin is the key here. At around 5,500 Kelvin, we're talking daylight color. Anything below warms up the light, evoking sunset hues, while anything higher delivers cooler bluish tones. Plus, I can crank up the power, altering the third characteristic, quantity. Of course, I can just move the light closer or further away from my subject. This not only amps up the brightness, but also sets the mood just right for our scene. And to top it all off, I can completely change the color to any color I want, which is awesome, and it allows me to create the effect of gel lighting. This can come in handy when you're creating atmosphere in your shot. But more about this in another video in the series where I'll take you through creating cinematic looks in a lot more detail. Pretty cool, I hear you say. Well, and, right in the and last but not least, let's talk about the direction of light. This aspect dictates the size and direction of shadows. Take a look. I'll begin with the Loom Cube positioned to the side of our Lego body. Notice how the shadow shrinks as I move the light directly above. It's almost non-existent. And as I shift to the other side, the direction of the shadow changes accordingly. So let's quickly recap our four key characteristics of light. Quality, quantity, 
color, and direction. In the next video, I'll walk you through selecting the perfect light source for your shot and demonstrate how these characteristics come together to craft truly stunning images. Make sure you check back for that. And there you have it, folks. I hope this will help you on your journey to creating mind-blowing toy photography. And I highly recommend you check out my buddy Dave DeBearmaker's latest book, From a Certain Point of View, The Ultimate Guide on Miniature Photography. It really is a treasure trove of knowledge from one of the best. Now, if you want to learn more about toy photography, check out my podcast, The Camera Shake Podcast, where I've talked to toy photography pros Dave DeBearmaker and Jesse Fireisen in detail about how they create their amazing images. And if you're not yet following the Camera Shake podcast, then what are you doing? Check it out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever awesome podcasts live. You'll find all the links in the description. As always, take a snapshot of your setup or share your final shots on Instagram. If you've been experimenting with Platypod gear or try out the lighting setups we've discussed today, I want to see your creations. Make sure you tag Platypod on Instagram and use the hashtag PostMyPlatypod. And if you like this video, we have a button specifically for you right here. Join the community over on Facebook to see what other Platypod users are up to and ring that bell so you don't miss our regular videos. That, my friends, is all for today. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.